so what's the subway like in Toronto in comparison to the tube in It's London? more spacious and yeah. we have AC. And are they happy on that? Honestly, no. I feel like they, they hate taking <laughs> yeah. the TTC too. But the tube is more efficient. I would say London is way more efficient than Toronto. Because Toronto's one line. Oh, so oh, it's really? east, west, and then there's a little bit of north, but it's just literally one line that gets you through the city. But you guys have like, it's like chaotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like it's a, just so much stuff. Yeah, but I find that here it's way more efficient and like smoother. I hate driving here more than the tube. I'd rather driving the here makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> when I found out people drive, like we drove here once in London, and I was like, yeah, yeah. never again. But it's is it like the whole like right side of the road or left side of the road? That, that you get also is trippy. With? Like Birmingham, forget about it. Like really? the way people, I it's like people, people driving. No, like girl, people. No, I don't you know. You got those country roads? She's like, no, baby, uh, in no. the city, no. She's like, honey, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> They like park on the sidewalks. It's oh, just, like, I heard like, that. And I, the first time I saw that, I said, child. They block like, each other's cars yeah, as well. That's what I heard on the It's side just road. chaotic. Do like, you guys get tickets? It's weird. Um, no, they don't because there's no space, right? Like, what are you going to do? Yeah. You have to park like that. Hey guys, welcome to the Overshareers podcast. My name is Hala. I'm Kulton. And this is us. And we've got a special, special guest. I would say she's the current it girl for me. Her content Aww. makes me feel very <laughs> comforted. It's like my end of the night TikTok watch. Aww, I love it, honestly. It's so you. cute. <laughs> so anyway, sweet. guys, welcome Hannah. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> We've got Hanan in our corner today. <laughs> she is, she is. She's in our look. That's how you say it in Somali. I'm sure most of you are aware, but Hanan is an occupational therapist turned digital artist. Yes. We have Ooh. a successful businesswoman, lifestyle yeah. and beauty influencer. Yeah. And as Harla mentioned already, an all round it girl. Yes, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Oh I love that intro. <laughs> Do you love it? We love it for I you, honestly. It. So I think one of the first things for me is, um, obviously, like most people know you from like the T. No, most people know you from TikTok and your social media and your YouTube. Yeah. Others might know you from the TDS um, episode. That was just amazing. Honestly, it was a very tear. As two people that have experienced grief because we lost our dads, oh it was God. like an open. <coughs> like an open format of like describing what grief really is yeah. especially for like people in our culture because i feel like often it gets brushed under the carpet of don't worry like it's allah's plan right. move on yeah. deal with it do you know what i mean so exactly. i felt like it was very it was a very articulate way to describe people's emotions especially when they're young because yeah. i think you and Colton were similar ages when you've lost yeah yeah i thought it was really things. open honest in our communities in general no one really talks about what happens after someone passes away or like how to process it it's kind of just like it happens it's qadar move on basically it happens you being know? the main like yeah mantra. like death is like written like and it's not fair. But it's like, there's so there's much. There's so many emotions. I can't yeah, as a child, no, 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 that means nothing to yeah, you. Yeah, like, and 20 is still early adult. But it, to me, it's like my brain wasn't developed. I didn't understand the that world. Frontal. It was like, yeah. you know, that frontal is like fresh 20. Yeah. Like, what do you do? So there were so many emotions. But alhamdulillah, I'm so grateful that I did that because I didn't realize how many people related to it. Yeah. yeah. And also, like, how common it is for parents to pass away. Like, I think sometimes we just believe that they're superhuman. Like, they mm -hmm. will never pass away. Oh and then it happens God. and you're like, what do I do? What do, I do? Like, how do I cope? Yeah. So alhamdulillah for the episode, I think it it helped me a lot and it still helps me talking about it even eight years later. Yeah. But it also helps a lot of people know that like they're not alone and that seeing someone else get through and like process grief and how they can get get through it is like yeah. inspirational. So alhamdulillah for that. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> so I think the question that we wanted to ask is we know that that situation obviously put you into a a path where also it see me fiddling already <laughs> a path where you started to create art and then you started your blog as a form of therapy to get yourself through yeah. it so like explain that period of time for us like how was it starting the blog using that as a format to get over your grief yeah and then moving on to art yeah I think writing was something that I've always done in like my journal I really need to get back to writing because I, I completely you said blog and I was like oh my god I Girl, forgot I about that blog I read <laughs> it today so I skimmed it I said that writing's good yeah, yeah I, I forgot about it yeah, sometimes people bring it up Mashallah. and I'm like I completely forgot about like my blog um, but yeah, like that was my way of processing. And so I wanted a way to release. And at the time, I wasn't really sharing anything on my platforms. It was kind of like a personal account. Yeah. Um, did not realize people were actually reading it. I think blogs were not, I didn't even know they were a thing. <laughs> but subhanAllah. Um, how, how do you even like, how do you even figure out if someone's read it? Is it like it receives 
I think it X does, but at the time. I think so, but it was so long ago that yeah. I don't even know if there was like analytics. I just posted. <laughs> so when people tell me they've read it, I'm like, what? Uh, <laughs> I thought it was like thing? a diary that I shared. But and, there's no. nothing for you, <laughs> and, and there's nothing there for you to be like, oh, like. X amount of people read it. Right? No, no, oh, I don't damn. think so. I've never checked. So that's, I feel like that's kind of nice. It's then. nice. It's yeah, because nice. it's just out there. Yeah. Yeah. But alhamdulillah, like I think that it really it allowed me to have a little bit of a kind of like a routine to like extract my thoughts and it was really efficient for me and when i put it out there wallah there was no expectations it was kind of like i'm just gonna put it out in the universe maybe someone will get like find yeah, it yeah, and yeah. it'll help them and then from there like my day-to-day -day life just became everything became inspirational for me like i would see something and it would remind me of her i would do something and remind oh. me of her and with art like my mom was also like really into art she yeah. was the one who pushed me into art very yeah, early yeah, yeah. yeah so then i was like while i was in university doing my uh, degree in occupational therapy i just needed something to pass the time i was in a like a new city with like no friends so i was like okay like i'm just gonna do something new and subhanallah it just became what it did like it, it just blew up and oh, then automatic. alhamdulillah automatic. just now it's a career but oh. i think i think it was because of the intention of how it started yeah and also the inspiration behind it that led to where it did yeah but like in everything that i do like my mom is in my my mind on my mind so like even where i'm at today is truly like her du'as I'm living through her, like, answer to her oh. duas. Tell so us about the good. journal. The, which journal? So basically, oh, her journal. <laughs> her, in, in the TDS episode, I'm yeah. so sorry, guys. In the TDS episode, Hanan talked about her mom's journal, and I think yeah. you found oh, it after yeah. she passed away. Yeah. And then, like, I don't know if you got, did you get the full journal transcribed? No, not yet. I have so many people to this day, like, Girl, email me. <laughs> like, can we, like, translate it? And I think, like, I'm I'm ready, but I'm also not. I think I'm not, like, fully ready to have, like, other parts of it, like, translated yeah. just yet. But I did have parts of it. Nice. Um, in the beginning, it was really hard to translate it because her words, like, the the words that she would use were so eloquent and, like, poetic. hard and very poetic. So yeah. even people who were, like, um, fully fluent in Arabic it took them time to like translate each word. I remember I went to my university teacher and I was taking Arabic during third year. He couldn't even translate some of the words. Oh my God, your mom's and I was like, oh my God, like what kind of poetry is this? It's <laughs> so like, oh I didn't know God. she was yeah. a secret poet. But subhanAllah, there's it probably was like, so many like secrets in there. Literally, Treasures. there's stuff about marriage. There's stuff about like the Prophet's life. Like oh literally gosh. there's so much, but it the part little diary. Literally. So, and there's also like artwork in there too. So like, I need no, to get it laminated. You, you have to. You but subhanAllah, I really feel like it was like a gift Allah Azza wa Jal gave me yeah, to like look into her life. And like I, t I brought it with me to oh the God, UK. I, I couldn't leave it. to have something like that. Yeah. I've got one letter from my dad that I'm like, <laughs> one dear to my life. And I'm like, like, I should laminate that letter. <laughs> I've got like emails that he used to send, like current emails. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. But it inspires you to want to do the same for your kids, you know, yeah, like in yeah. the future have something. I feel like everything's so digital now. Yeah, I think about yeah, it. I'm yeah. like, yo, what am I going to... How am I gonna Literally, tell my kids that like you even know? like pictures? Yeah, I'm pictures. Like, I only take pictures of my kids on my phone, and I'm like, when I was younger, I used to, my mom used to have like entire books of photographs albums, and yeah. albums. Yeah. Like, isn't that mad? Yeah. And I don't even have one. No, we recently, like about two years ago, we discovered an old camera that had a memory card in it. So I went online and was like looking for the charger that like you know is. The, yeah. the charger that the camera uses but it was such an old camera that I never yeah. thought in a million years that I'd find the charger and I found the charger on Amazon and then I found the pictures and they were like pictures of my dad with my little sister oh, oh yeah oh, baby sister baby, yeah she was like I six months that. at the time and it's like he's holding her and I was like oh god we've got to do something with these pictures I never got them developed but I still have the camera I love that the I actually went through something similar where I found old VCRs Oh. And then my like when I saw them, I knew that they were like old videos from way back because my parents used to take a ton of videos. I'm sure yeah, your parents yeah, were the yeah. same. So my best friend and I, she went and found like on Facebook Marketplace someone that sells a VCR. So I bought it and I watched all these oh home my videos. God. Oh, oh my god, so god. Oh my god, it was so crazy because like you, you know, all over. It's like you're seeing yourself how you're interacting with your parents and like oh. these home videos of her like oh recording. God. Like things her like dressing up, like just so many things that, that you I'm would like, never get remember. ready with me. Yeah, it was in ins the VCR. insane. Oh. And then um, my husband bought me like a thing that you can transfer the VCRs into like like footage that you can save on your phone. I haven't done it yet, but it's oh, nice that I have like videos so now. Nice. Yeah, so you just have like, technology. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah, it literally makes life easier. It's yeah. great yeah. that you could just have that on your phone. Yeah. Another one that I discovered was you know so basically my dad used to do this thing where he'd take pictures of us and stuff and then send it to my grandma back home. 
so we never had those photos yeah. but then he would always keep the film yeah and, oh. and then I, so one day I was like clearing out the loft and I found loads of film and decided to go and get them developed I didn't know developing film was so expensive by yeah. the way like yeah. so I would snappy snaps That's and insane. was like what snappy snaps is a rip off girl oh, like oh. <laughs> so expensive yeah and it, but then we found all these like really old pictures from like there were loads of stuff in there was like oh, my Michelle. uncle's wedding us when we were kids in the park pictures of myself that I have never oh seen before God. in my life but we can see them through the film but we can yeah. ne- we ca- you can't really make out the what is going on yeah. so amazing oh my I god know. I remember once I posted something on Instagram I think it was like a, a picture a baby picture and two people who I have I don't know at all DM'd me photos of me at like a wedding when I was a baby <laughs> and I was like <laughs> Oh, what? <laughs> I'm like, she's scary. And it just makes me, but it makes me think about the fact that like there's other people that also that have, have photos and videos yeah. of you when you were a kid. There's one probably, of your family that yeah, gave them no, the photos. I was like, okay. I'm not gonna lie, my cousin from Canada was so crazy. She always sends me random pictures of me and her in Somalia back in the day, <laughs> and it's like us in these ugly little dresses next to goats. And I'm like, why are you trying to embarrass me? Like, delete this out. Oh my god, that's so funny. Oh my god. So going off the artworks, so this is inspired by your mum, but the artwork is very intentional. Yeah. So we can see a lot of like black Muslim representation. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. So we just kind of wanted to understand, is this something that you plan? This is, is this what you plan? Because a lot of the artwork that you usually see isn't very repres- represent- yeah. Usually. representative. Yeah, representative. Yeah, I'm trying to find <laughs> the <laughs> word. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the artwork that we see generally isn't very representative. So mm-hmm. you doing that, I feel obviously is intentional. So I just mm-hmm. wanted to see where, where the idea came from. I think for me, like when I first started, I was creating a lot of like East African centered art because I didn't see much of it. Like I don't see much Eritrean art at all, like very rare. And if it is, it's usually people in Eritrea. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to create. So it started off with Eritrean art, Somali art, Kenyan art, Ethiopian art. But it was like centered on like streetwear or like something that's like more relatable, I guess, to like the younger generation. So I mixed that in with culture and people loved it because it's like, oh my God, I see myself. Like this is me as a diasporan, Eritrean, Somali, whatever it is, in art. And I never saw that. So I loved what I created and other people loved it. And then that kind of just grew. And then for me, it was just really important because as a child growing up, I didn't see me in art. And if I do see like Muslim women in art, they're usually like fair skinned. Like you don't see much brown or dark skinned women in art. Especially I like, even see hijab. No. or even hijab, exactly. And now it's become this thing. Like now we're slowly starting to see more black and brown artists like coming out and like creating and stuff. So that was really important for me. Yeah. Um. But then it was it started out that way, and then it just kind of like spread, and then became like creating um, art for different countries and oh. like creating art for Muslim women. Yeah. And then it's like you know it's like it. It's really about creating like represent representation, but also like a safe space for like Black Muslim women. They could <laughs> even be used as cards, like oh yeah, yeah, so much like, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Because oh, we never used to. I used to give Christmas cards. I'm not gonna lie, yeah. Yeah. I used to give, cards, but I never <laughs> used to give Eid cards. We had Eid cards. Yeah, we had yeah, them. Yeah. But you know the ones that we had back in the day were just really weird. So dead. It's just yeah. like Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak, yeah. or just like a picture of a moon. Or yeah, yeah. Star. These ones are nicer. So I'm like yeah, Ramadan yeah, time. But we can't wait, girl. We need those. And even that phone case is so nice. Oh, yes, I love it. It's literally my favorite phone case. I, I love, love it. it. It's oh, yeah. so beautiful. I'm super grateful. It, it's, what was I going to yeah. say to you? Um, there's another artist who's Sudanese, and she does these like cosmic galaxy, gender-inspired. Oh no way! Oh, it's oh, so beautiful. I don't know, actually. Oh, I don't know her name, but she always comes up on my thing. I I took a screen. Oh, like Michelle if Allah. I could from the UK. Oh uh, yeah, she's from oh, the UK. Oh wow. And, like, she's, she I think she did like um. She's got a gallery somewhere in Central and she did something abroad. Oh, I think I follow her on Twitter. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, it's like it's very like, like very uh, cosmic. Yes. And it's like very willy, not willy. She <laughs> puts like her cultural aspects yeah. to it as well. Mashallah, and it's incredible. Like, it's like a yeah. cloud with like a clock and then there's something culture yes. based. It's so nice. It's incredible. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I would literally have that as a painting. Yeah, oh, it's wow. amazing. I've seen her artwork before. It's I'm incredible. Just, and I hope I see more of us though in art. There's it's another so, yeah. girl that I've seen on Instagram. I can't remember her name, but she, she's, she's, I think she's Somali. Han, you might know her. I completely forgot mm-hmm. her name, but she does like 
like Somali women artwork. Okay, mashallah. So it's like you know, magic women. Yes. She does like, oh, I don't know, the everyday yeah. girl, but a lot mashallah. of them you'll just see her like wearing a bati and like a garbasar and stuff mashallah, like that. Mashallah. Don't you, I'm sure you've seen Guys, my fit, put these That's amazing. The but they, they, she just makes them look so beautiful. Mashallah. But it's like they all have unique, like even yours. Like I know your signature design. Like it's yeah. very unique. Like yeah. I know Hanan made that. And it's yeah. similar to this girl, Sudanese girl I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, absolutely. I need to write her name at the bottom. But like hers is like, I can just tell. Like, yeah, you made it's like that. an art style. That's yeah, like and it's yeah. so crazy. Mashallah, it's it's amazing. amazing, mashallah. Uh, we're talking about relationships. We know Hanan is a, a, a happily married woman. So we want to know the love story behind it. Okay. If that is possible. <laughs> so um, my husband came to Toronto for a Somali Student Association. They were having an event. So his podcast group got invited to come and speak for the three days. So he was in Toronto, I'm from Toronto, and we met at Starbucks. Oh! Oh, God for The place that can't Starbucks be Starbucks is boycotted <laughs> now, so I feel like my love story is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> so now when I'm like, Starbucks, yeah, I'm like, change the name. we boycotted, but yeah, that was pretty much it. Went to Cafe Nero. She went to Costa. I went to Costa. Oh, that's cute. And I was like, he just offered me a coffee, and alhamdulillah, oh, I just Wait, just out of the blue, he was yeah. like, hey, would you like a coffee? I was like, oh, I love that. Yeah. Right. I already had a coffee in my hand, though, and I was like, Oh, so oh, he just he wanted to talk to you. He just wanted to talk to you. And he was like, how can I speak to this fly girl? Right, so we do this thing called question of the week. It's called Monday Madness. So this week, the question is, would you guys let your siblings choose your life partner? <laughs> I don't think I would personally. Never, no. Yeah, no Never. No. They're younger than me. I feel like they Same. don't know what oh, I like, <laughs> He's like, no. And they just don't know what I like. Yeah, no. And I, I feel like we, me and my sister, like, like our types are completely different yeah, yeah so i don't have sisters so uh, i feel like if i had a sister maybe would you let your brother no <laughs> no <laughs> no what if he's like to this brother is amazing this person is good for you i don't know would you meet him at the very least no i don't think so <laughs> I, don't think so I feel like it's just weird I'm like, like, like yeah but like oh, i don't want to meet your friend sorry yeah yeah you know i don't know there's just it's odd <laughs> no i don't we probably it. grew up together <laughs> He's probably like the local boy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right, so the girlies said, one girl goes, my sister, yes, my brother's absolutely not. Yeah, which, literally what I said. Which goes for you guys. Yeah. Um, someone goes, their taste in men is toxic. She wants bulky men, <laughs> while I want a, gold, a golden retriever. <laughs> so she goes, no, I will never let her choose it. Um, someone goes depending on my siblings most people said depending on which sibling it is which is quite funny so m I'm assuming the sibling that you're closer to is yeah. right. more willing to work with yeah. someone goes hell no we're 13 years apart the men I like she considers them grandpa <laughs> so okay girl some people are into that you know <laughs> Um, someone goes, they just have bad taste in men. Send Ooh. her. Oh, just like that. Just <laughs> sending for the sister. Just like that. <laughs> she goes, another person goes, hell no. These N words will set, she was like, will set me up with a bahal just to take the piss. A bahal means animal. An uh, oh, so wow. basically they'll, they'll set her up with an animal just Dude. to take the piss. Um, she goes, one fed us raw chicken one time. I can't trust him to keep me alive, let alone pick a partner for me. <laughs> You know what? She's so funny. What? So no one would actually do it. There's not one person that said yes. It's just, you're just asking for trouble at this point. Your whole Literally. sibling. No. Wait, Unless no. your sibling is like very mature and like mm. has a very like. Yeah. If it's like an older sister. Yeah. Something like that, then maybe. Because yeah. like they're looking out for you as you're younger. Like I know mm. I would have a good, like I could recommend a good partner for my sister. Do you think so? <laughs> Really? Yeah. I think I've got an excellent judge of character. Really? No, I'm joking, I'm joking. She would no. never take anyone I bring seriously. Yeah. But no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Ew, no way. <laughs> yeah, like, please keep it. those people away from me. I feel like I feel like it's a person I feel like generation wise, like our parents, I think they took on a lot of that because yeah. of obviously their parents hooked them up with people and then they were forced to accept them and like there was no a lot a lot of choice based mm. on that do you know what i mean yeah mm. whereas like why we us like we have so much more freedom to pick who yeah. our partner is and i feel like sometimes that freedom is a good thing and sometimes i feel like i feel like it's not the best to be honest mm. no. i feel like there's a drought right now with like Girl. 
<laughs> like everyone's like shaking it right now. Girl, <laughs> I heard the streets are the just. The streets are bleak. bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's a sad world out there. Yeah, it's hard. In oh, the realm yeah. of relationships. Yeah. So I think a lot of people would actually prefer if like you recommended them yeah. to someone. Like I get it all the time. Like, if you know anyone, like oh. in the UK. And I'm like, I wish, but. Or like, does your husband know anyone? <laughs> yeah, literally all the time. And I'm like, oh my God. there's nobody. You know what it is? I just mm, I just don't know, guys. I don't know what it is. Where is the drought coming from? Can we resolve this issue for the Muslim girlies? I think it's... I think the killer is apps. This is my personal opinion. Do you think so? I really think that's what it's it like is. Mismatch and yeah. 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 Things, but like you know. certain apps because I feel like nowadays people think that they have so many options, especially men. Yeah. So they view relationships as kind of disposable. Like, oh, yeah. if this doesn't work out, whatever, I'll just go on an app and see who's next. And like, swipe next. Rather than exactly. So I think the culture also of relationships has changed dramatically. Like, no one really wants to take the time to like invest and like yeah. try to like like longevity yeah, you know yeah, what i mean it's kind of yeah. like oh if this doesn't work out whatever like you have one problem and like you would just end the relationship yeah Damn. you know what Valid. i mean like i have a bunch of people i can just like i feel yeah. like having more it choice it's like yeah, i can it's i can change my geographical location to another location i'm done with london now yeah. let's check the u.s Shit, Birmingham. you know what i mean so it just <laughs> seems like there's so many options when in reality yeah. it's like i didn't even mm. think of it like that i feel like having a lot of choice people obviously will get complacent like it's you not, can't you I, do we have a lot of choice like, i feel like men feel like have a lot of choice no, but women, women don't. don't have a lot of choice like women are inc- like i'm um, incredible yeah <laughs> but the options for of like of a great men is like one good man 10 amazing women i think that those options get smaller as you age and mature as well yeah exactly it gets you're harder because you're like i'm too smart for you guys and your standards keep growing. Because exactly. right, every day you're like, I need someone with money. Yeah. Who's kind. Who's yeah. Understand. But in my mind, I'm like, a lot of the things that I would want in a partner, they're normal stuff that anyone would want. Just yeah. But it's like people are just not meeting the mark. Like the basic yeah. expectations. Is that how, it, in my mind, I'm like, am I raising my sons right? Because this <laughs> is just like, I'm actually scared for them. <laughs> because imagine someone comes to me and they're like, your son ain't shit. Like, I'm actually gonna <laughs> be so oh upset. Can you imagine? That's actually like, my biggest fear, I can't. <laughs> like, what have you done in the 20 years that you've been raising this boy? Like, it actually scares me. Oh. No, Charlotte, like, what like, you like can't that. be kind and just know what a woman wants. Yeah. You should have good, high expectations, of course. Yeah. Like, I, th- I feel like there should be the basics, mm-hmm. but then, like, I feel like sometimes, mm-hmm. I'm gu- as women, we're guilty <laughs> of this, where it's like, if they don't check off all the boxes, yeah. like, no. Of course. But I feel like, na- like, you need to be kind of, like, reasonable. Yeah. Uh, no human being is gonna check off every single box, unless Allah blesses you with that, and you're, like, super yeah. lucky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's always gonna be, like, one or two where you're just like, okay, I can, like, as long as it's reasonable, you can work this. around it, yeah, or yeah. it's something they can change. I feel yeah, like then, yeah. but I feel like now everyone's like, if they don't meet to. this, on to the next. And it's like, there is no next though. But this is the thing, like, like people don't realize that life, even life isn't as rigid as yeah. checking off a box. You know what I right. mean? You're, whoever your partner's like turns out, whoever your partner turns out to be, there's always gonna be. The, literally. Some, or Something that happens. Right, or that expectation. Let's say it's like money. And this guy, the guy you meet is like perfect. He has great money. And, and then you get married and he loses it. Now what? Like, mm. You know what, what, you know what are you gonna mean? do? What are you what doing? Are we working with him? Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's just like I'm not gonna like, lie. Money is a big factor, though, guys. Yeah, like, it is. The, the bigger yeah. we get, the older we get. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. When I was 20, I would I would easily marry someone that's like yeah, you know, I love and like you know we'll, we'll work together. But if I'm like 29, 35, yeah, yeah, I'm not trying to come up with you. I love need is you not to be where you are. Like I'm so sorry. Like no. the two thousand pound rent. It yeah, ain't gonna yeah. pay for itself and it's not yeah. gonna come from me if I'm love having a baby. Love does not pay you. the bills. No, I love like, does not pay the bills. Like, no. And I think majority of like issues when you do get married, if you forget about all the fickle stuff of like ex yeah. and whatever, like I genuinely feel like the main core issues people have when they get divorced is either financial yeah. or it's abusive. One thousand percent. Finances is actually the biggest reason why people um, divorce. Divorce, yeah. So, but yeah. it's it's either or, and also with abuse, it's like there are def- different elements with abuse. It could be like this sort of abuse or that sort of abuse. Yeah. So that's like an um, umbrella term, I right, would say. Right. Right. Mm. Could be like emotional abuse. Could be physical. Could be financial. Could, could be, be anything. Could be anything. Yeah. So it's never know. trifling. But that moves us on slowly to what's been happening on TikTok recently. So we all know that our lovely sister Megan Rice. Oh my God! She yes. Took a shahada. Oh my God! Allah, oh my God. Allah bless her. I mean, honestly, 
honestly, it just made me, I literally came on TikTok, guys, and I just saw her wearing hijab. I was like, huh? Like, oh my God. When did this happen? We were, we were getting messages in the group chat, like, guys, she's on live, she's about to take her shahada. Oh my God, I was so happy it. I was able to catch it. Oh, oh you actually watched it. watched it? Yeah, I watched it. it. I, it was amazing. Amazing. I screen recorded it, I was like, I need to like remember this. Oh. Allah, so amazing. Oh, Allah, really nice. I think I saw like a, a reposted video of it. Yeah, of yeah. her and- So many people. Name? have reverted on TikTok, I know, it's insane. Especially over what's happened in Palestine. Yeah, it's amazing. Aid them Aid them she looks so good in hijab. Have you seen her recent I know, TikTok? And her skin is popping. Yeah, Guys, well, she looks like, so is good. This what, the nur? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it, they're like the nur is And you thing. know what? She's like, you know what makes me laugh? I was thinking about this today. I was like, she's already found her hijab style. Right, like, yeah. Wallah, quickly. Yeah. Like quickly. she knows what works for her face. Here's me, this is a new hijab style. <laughs> 29 years, guys. I've been Muslim and I'm still fiddling with out different hijab, hijab styles. She's so funny though, because why she put her hijab over her afro? She's like, guys, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, my she, black Muslim girls, what do I do? You just see the afro? I was screaming. <laughs> so <funny>. and then, <laughs> I was like, how do I tame this? Is no, my guys, wash day tomorrow? Megan is so funny. <laughs> like, why so is she funny. so funny? Why was she so funny? And then she's like, guys, the hijab feels like a warm hug. Like, she's like, I love it. I was like, wow, I, I never thought that. about that. Like, she's like, I just feel comfortable. <laughs> but it's so amazing how like a lot of the people have who reverted instantly wore hijab. Like yeah. they didn't yeah. even wait. Like they it was just like, yeah. I'm like, mashallah, it's so amazing. Just how amazing. Allah 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 May Allah make it easy for her. I mean, there's I just mean. a lot. Of, there's a lot of positive. Um, a lot of positive things are coming out of the situation in Palestine. <coughs> um, and I just feel like this was, it just made the air so light. Yeah. There's like three people that took their shahad, I think. Oh, yeah. There was like there a was Jewish, the Jewish girl, yeah. yeah. I mean, Allah make it easy for them. And then another yeah. black girl, I think. Yeah. But with, the, but with Megan, so we, so I think there was a bit of hoo-ha going on with the, with <laughs> Megan Rice recently, where she was on a live with um, a guy called Abastani. I don't know if you saw no, it. No, I didn't. Her Quran book club is currently at 12K subscribers wow, um yeah. talking members as well oh my and then God. she was on a live um with with this guy called abastani which was quite controversial so so he helped out at the beginning he was yeah, very helpful he was very helpful very supportive he and i feel like he was that. giving her a lot of good advice as well <laughs> but then there was this one particular <laughs> turn. there was one particular <laughs> thing he said that had the, the, ladies. the girlies jump in oh yeah no. the girlies were so i'll play i'll play it for you and i just want to hear your okay. thoughts Going out on the, all these stupid podcasts and saying it doesn't make sense for Hello. me, it doesn't make sense for me to do this, it doesn't make sense for me. And so, what they're doing is they're corrupting the minds of young men and women to not get married. Right now, there's over 53% of women that are not married in the United States. Right? I'm, I'm just talking about the, 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 the Muslim community. I don't know about the rest of the world. You know what I mean? I, I'm just talking about the Muslim community. The divorce rate is over 73%. This in the Muslim community? This is, this is a calamity in the Muslim community, Stop right? It. And a lot of it stems from, according to, according to statistics, a lot of it stems from women initiating it as well because they have these <laughs> ideas, a lot of them. I, again, I'm saying generally speaking, I'm not saying for everyone. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, they, some of them, they, 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 they take these ideas, they take their, their thought process from these dumb podcasts they take their <laughs> ideologies from these 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 people that are corrupt that, that shouldn't even have a microphone in their mouth in the beginning stop. why did they hole. why did they come for y'all so bad i don't know i feel attacked <laughs> <laughs> i was like let me drop the mic i feel attacked i said the girl hasn't even gone into a mischief yet like <laughs> so was like shaking a little he was bit. Getting, so you, you, you could see the comments. People were coming yeah. for him. Were like, he was, they were like, "Yeah, but it's 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 men too. They don't have. They're not providing for these women." The and statistics like, are sending me though. Where did he get seventy three percent? They just bring statistics I into do, it. Yeah. Like, no. Like, let's crazy. talk about domestic violence. Let's talk about domestic violence in the Muslim community then. If we want to talk about feminism, I think what, forget all of that. I, you know what made me laugh? I was like, this woman has just entered Islam. <laughs> Islam. Oh, it was about. She to hasn't enter even Islam. prayed a salah yet. Like, how are you starting off with marriage? She hasn't oh put them to on yet. She hasn't done anything. Ugh, it's just I don't know. New Muslims. I'm like, literally. You know, the beginning stages of when you become a Muslim is so like. Ah. Yeah. And then the next day it's like. Mm. Everyone's like, like everyone do, this, do, do this, this, do this, do this. And I'm just like, yeah. I can't imagine. Like, the girl is not ready for marriage. How are you going <laughs> to talk about marriage to her, Miskinta? <laughs> 
But I'm, you know, uh, it compelled the um, other from the digital sisterhood to chime in. I'm glad she did. Did she? I was going to say. Ada chimed in. Yeah, one thing about Ada, she's not going to be. She was, <laughs> she was fuming. I, I could, her. like, I'm fuming. <laughs> I was like, why are you coming for us podcast girls? What have we done to you? <laughs> exactly. And, what are they saying? And also, there's such a small minority of podcast girls. So he's literally at, he's adding someone. Definitely, definitely. Right? Yeah. So Ada was like, this is my issue with what was said using feminism as a scapegoat right. to delegitimize the valid concerns and issue women are having in their homes nobody holds accountable. Right. It just blames women. Right. And she went on to say the divorce rates do suck and it makes everybody and it makes so. nobody happy, but until women are heard and respected, the issue will continue. And I believe men are the maintainers of women, so maintain your women, handle them with care, love and respect to the best of your abilities, and everything else that is outside of your control, charge it to the game. Period. The game. Uh, <laughs> um, and she was like, you tried, but please don't be short-sighted to think that feminism is the only drive and reason for women being unhappy and wanting a divorce. Right. That's wishful thinking and kind of the worst kind. It's also quite dangerous. Very. It's so horrible. Very There's very so yeah. many. I I'm so surprised that he didn't mention the lack of financial support for men being one of the key. There's no accountability. But it kills me though, because if we're being real right now, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> if we're actually being real, if we're being real, like the the problem we have right now with podcasts is male podcasts. Like, yeah, like there's like this many. A very tiny podcast that percentage. are being run by women and even then it's like super beneficial like first of all let's talk about tds has been like life-changing for so many people storytelling and to also the level. concepts and the the stuff they talk about everything returns back to allah like yeah. that's the premise of the, the podcast yeah but i think sometimes what it is is like men are so afraid of women having voices mm -hmm. and I think like that's exactly what i think that's and, what, and what exactly and, and advising they, each other exactly because they think that having well having a voice is powerful yeah so there's like fear that comes with that of mm. like oh we don't want them to have control in these certain spaces they just don't want them to be in these spaces but, but it's like yeah. women yeah. wanna i mean if y'all like, are not gonna talk about our issues we're gonna talk about our issues exactly like, <laughs> like why but don't we so address sided though we hear every yeah. day men on podcasts talking about women this women that or hijab or, or things hijab, that they have like, no literally. understanding that about, has literally. nothing to do with them yeah. they don't even struggle with it why are you talking about it you know what comes up on my tiktok a lot now like every time i scroll through it'll be a tiktok live and the topic will be something like should w women in Islam cook and clean? Like, are they required to cook and clean? And it's like a whole back and forth about this. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, this is what y'all are sitting here talking about. <laughs> Pay my bills <laughs> and I will cook and clean. That and is then, simple. And then you have the cheek to talk about like what women, women are doing a podcast. Doing. And then to bring that up to a person who just converted is crazy like, to me. Like, like, she is a baby. She is literally <laughs> guys. A newborn baby. Her hasn't even come into Islam properly. How sad. How That's is that not going to put her off? No, I'm like, her sins are forgiven. They're she trying to bring one up. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. They're trying to create a They're trying to create They're like, they're like you no, we're dragging so you down she to our level. She has a clean slate. They're so mad. They're it's like, literally, literally the first you down with day us. her sins are gone and you're trying to do her like that. Like, that's how you know. You no, I'm, I'm glad that she was like quiet throughout the whole thing as yeah. well. Because like, yeah. her face is making more. She was just like shocked. Yeah. She's just like, are men like this everywhere? Like, everywhere? No, literally, no matter what religion what sex whatever they're the like, same they're the same. <laughs> that's actually wild i'm glad how they shut so that down 1000 percent. because they fear also they fear her podcast because like she her audience is huge yeah i, fear her podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to be dragged, <laughs> dragged on tds <laughs> no way like you say something world. you're done you're done <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> <laughs> overshare is finished <laughs> oh my god that's a muslim world finish you. oh my god that's so funny oh my god okay oh. Anyway, may Allah bless him and bless Amen. her Amen. and continue to give her all the hasanat that she deserves. Because we love, we love that. She's incredible. She's actually the one who inspired me to get a new Quran. Me too. Yeah. Oh, I said that last week in the yeah. podcast. Oh, an English translation. Yeah, well. I got a new English translation. It's so nice. And Can I'm like, literally. Can we just literally? talk about that for a second? So Is it not mad? Like, I was thinking about this yet. I was like, all my life I've learned in Quran. Yeah. Um, I've never read like an English translation back to front. Me too. Same. Me too. Not back to front. Not back to front, not. yeah. No. Like, I don't even know what certain surahs in the middle are, yeah. I'll be honest. Isn't yeah. that mad? And the way that no. we were ta taught Quran as well is we were taught to read it and then we're left to our own devices. Yeah. Yeah. No, literally. To first memorize. Yeah. When I went to Duxi, it was just 
memorization. It's a madness. It's just memorization. <laughs> Read and make sure like you're done your asha before you go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that yeah. was it. Like and, um, thing. And, and you're literally like the night before, you're just there like trying to learn it and then you just come in, boom, done. Right? Yeah, literally. Passed. But the substance of it was never really, like really Like the tafsir taught. of it, yeah. the meaning. Yeah. Like if I knew I could read this in English and fully indulge it like a book that I would read, wouldn't yeah. that be amazing? It's amazing though. But yeah. when you see like how like, they read the Quran and how like it inspires them and they quickly revert. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I'm missing something. Right. I'm like, literally, what's wrong with me? I've been Muslim for like literally my, my whole life. life. All my life. And why am I not feeling like that same okay. sense of Iman that, Yeah, I think because we take it for granted. We do. So We're so used to it. So used yeah. to it. Yeah. It's part of every day. Yeah. But I'm going to put you guys on. There's the Quran called the Majestic Quran that I purchased last Ramadan. And it's amazing. I was telling you about it yeah, last week. You sent it to me. Um, and it's blue. I don't know if you guys have seen it online. I just saw mm. it as a sponsored post on Instagram. Oh, no way. And it, I remember seeing that it was free. So I just purchased it and it's good. It's really good because they have the summary at the top. So they tell you what, everything that's gonna happen in the sword at the top. And then it goes into like line by line translation, but it's like a very simple, Version. to read yeah, and understand yeah. i love that it's so good i love that the so one that, that i got is like um each word is underneath each like uh, arabic word oh. it has the actual word translated oh, that's so nice. that you can understand what you're reading and then on the side it has like the the commentary. english translation oh the actual yeah translation. Yeah. yeah so oh. i was like th and the commentary as well mm. a little bit so, good. so i was like this is, is that good. the tajweed one i think it is i'm yeah, gonna show you the name so. of it i've shared it on my instagram but yeah it's yeah. it's really um helpful oh, but yeah, yeah. Megan Rice is changing lives. Man. I know she really <laughs> is. I was like, girl, you've got no, me honestly, reading the Quran like a book. She talks about it because you're like, damn, what, what, what? I need to go back to reading the Quran. You start feeling a bit guilty. Yeah, definitely. But alhamdulillah, like I think the amount of like, oh, she's so blessed. I know. So the best. amount of ajr she's gonna get for inspiring so many I like know. Muslims and non-Muslims like all to over read. the world. Imagine. Subhanallah. And that all started from a conflict. Subhanallah. Isn't that crazy. Subhanallah. Even Palestinians too. Mashallah. Anyway, swala. Lovely swell swell about gone. I don't know if you know about our home secretary, but she was sacked I she got to booted, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got booted. But the person that came to take over is not any better, I heard. Yeah. Yeah. It's not any better. I and mean, now David Cameron's back, and I'm just like, girl, I just can't even deal with it. It's like, it's like when an old villain from like a soap opera comes back. Yeah. It's like, why? Someone was saying it's like a telenovela. Literally, it's EastEnders. It's like <laughs> Dirty Den coming back from EastEnders. <laughs> it's too much. Do you see them trying to, um, did you see on Twitter, they try to uh, get press charges on the girl that had a sign that said yeah. something about calling her a oh, I saw that sign oh, live at the Gabriel protest. So, did you? I saw it. I saw and my you. sister laughed at it. And I was like, we were both laughing at the sign because we thought it was funny. Tell me why oh, I came home, saw we her. saw it. She was like a little bit ahead of us. And then I came home and I saw it on like the Metropolitan Police yeah. Twitter page saying, have you seen this woman, blah, blah, blah. I shared it with my sister and she's dying. She's like, what the hell is going on? Literally. I was like, someone goes, leave it to the brown people. No, like, someone's like, why are you in brown people's business? <laughs> I was crying. Crying. <laughs> Just like, they always call each other coconut. I don't think that was a racial slur. I don't think it is. Well, we used to, it was like what we used to say to each other just to take the piss yeah, out of Yeah, like, I don't think that's a racial slur. Like that's what we used to say. It's not a racial slur. Oh, yeah, Similar yeah, to yeah. coconut, but they'd be like, you're an Oreo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But just for context, so the girl at the protest um, was holding a sign with a coconut tree, and the coconut tree had coconuts that were on the tree, and there were some on the floor, but the ones on the floor had the faces of Rishi Sunak and Suella Braverman. It's giving coconut. And then the All Metropolitan right. Police obviously flagged that as a hate crime. First of all, the fact that they're there taking photos of people's signs. I know. It's so it's crazy to me. Later it's on. All like awkward. what? In my pocket like they're there undercover or something. They like, are though. They all are undercover. It's so, so scary. So wait, the people that are taking pictures of the signs are, are undercover, undercover police. Yeah, they're undercover yeah. police. Yeah. Do you think they're normal police officers? They're oh normal. my God. They, but if they you take it in though, them. she was posing like. Yeah. 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 The whole time I was a cop. Oh my god, that's, that's actually so crazy. So because she was where cheesing in the photo, like she's yeah, so she, happy. Literally, <laughs> so it was no, done. So you have to ask, where are you from? I so that man said, "Let me take a photo of you." No, Smile. I'm safe, guys. They were next to us. There were undercover police officers next to us taking photos. There was this girl on TikTok that talked about she's Iraqi and she was like she was on a train, she was wearing um she was wearing like a Palestinian flag and everything and she had her headphones on and she was like basically the, this white guy and a brown guy came on the came on and they were like wearing normal clothes. But she, she clocked they were undercover police. So they came up to her and they were like and this is during the Saturday protest and then they were like to her, Oh, so are you going to that Palestine protest? Oh, that's the way they speak, so yeah. Funny. And she was like, yeah, and? And he was like, 
so what are you gonna be like throwing things on that? Is the way he was speaking? Oh, they were trying to make it seem like they were like down with the kids. (laughs) And then she was like, no, we're not gonna throw anything. It's peaceful. And he goes, no, but two of my other friends are do that. They're gonna be making sure that they do stuff. Do you know? I mean, it's the way he was talking in that dirty, disgusting accent. Yeah, so weird. And then she was just like, I don't want to speak now. Can you go away? And he goes, no, no, no. Just tell me more about Palestine, innit? And what are you gonna? And then after provoking people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then after Literally. he was like, are you going to go do your prayers? <laughs> she was like, what? That is so weird. And she goes, the brown guy didn't say anything the whole time. He was quiet. It was just the white no. police officer that was saying it. They're harassing That brown people. man is just trying to get his bills like, He's trying to get his no, bills paid. Like, come on, is that not harassment? He was like, are you going to do your prayers? <laughs> and that. Like, she's going to be going like this. What, what the hell? No, that's weird. She was like, that's when I clocked that they were. I didn't even realise that they were undercover police officers there. We were just... Uh, I in Suella's Home Secretary government. You I kid you not, that was the thing. most peaceful protest I've ever been to in my life. SubhanAllah. Yeah. It's, it's really, so really trying to c- create a whole... Um, Fit now. Yeah. yeah. It's wild. That's crazy though. <laughs> anyway, it made me laugh. She was like, I don't know what you're trying to get at. <laughs> Did you guys see the video me. of the far right guys? Yeah. And yeah. Like, go back to your country. And the guy was like, I was born here. <laughs> You know what made me laugh? I just thought that is like a mid-level manager some, in someone's company right now that is raging like that. Isn't they that look so like crazy? people that we see every day at work. That we work with <laughs> no way. on an everyday basis. Like someone's vice and, vice director or something. And like every I mean? other word was like, see you next Tuesday. He was like, see you next and Tuesday. And then he was, he was like, the guy, I was born so in this country. I was born in this country. He goes, I was born here too. <laughs> What's your point? <laughs> yeah. Someone oh was God. like, um, how they were wearing a, I think Arsenal jersey or something. It was, so, and they're yeah. like, literally, the sponsor for your team is a Muslim country. So like, oh like, my God, give it a break. Like, someone goes, you should have been a Chelsea supporter. <laughs> 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 Okay, oh, right. Should we move scenario. on to our scenario? Yeah. Oh. Where's this jacket from? We love Zara. That. Girl, That's the men's cool. section eats. Like, Ooh. I don't even. This you is know, nice, and it doesn't even look like a man's jacket. Right? I just love it because they always what have like a nice oversized medium. medium. I've nice. been getting sweatshirts from the men's section recently. It's so nice. And the Zara. quality is better than Way the women's better. quality. Because you know the one for women's, it's always fitted or like, yeah. 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 if you don't find your size, and they never have like a large or extra large. I can never buy like, trousers But I feel like they use yeah. more thread on men's clothes. I don't know why. They care about men's clothes yeah. more. <laughs> trousers from Zara is it's actually like, a death sentence. It's my enemy. It's my enemy. Oh. It's Every my time enemy. I go in there, I'm like, do I have body dysmorphia? Yeah. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with you? I have not been. I'm like, where, I'm like, where's his belly? I'm like, there's no way. It like, changes all the time. size changes. Yeah, for all fact. the time. For fact. It only fits if it has like elastic. Yeah. yeah. It's like reg- That's why I'm like, I just shop in the men's section now. Like. I don't even buy that's trousers so from there anymore. anymore. I don't buy yeah. trousers. Even for trousers anymore. for men, you can get like really nice trousers. I feel like really? as East African ASOS, women, yeah. right, no one. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. Way. ASOS I men. No. Their crotches the would be men's section. No, well, you can say it's No, see, I just thought, I think I did it once. I just thought it would be very really straight not. fit. <laughs> but you know like how now like really, really baggy jeans are in? Yeah. But a lot of the times like it'll be fitted on the waist, but then it looks weird if you have like a, an hourglass figure. Yeah. yeah. So if you get it from the men's section, like you can just cinch the waist, but everything else will be baggy. So you can get it tailored. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Do you know what I'm looking for? I'm looking Hanan for Hanan is putting us all on, guys. <laughs> you I better not sell this out in Zara. I'm just Hanan, saying. answer me this. Joggers for women. Where do I get because them? Because what I what tends to happen with me is they always fit too much on the bum. Yeah, yeah, they're so soft. Yeah, yeah. That way too tight on the bum. I don't like, like that. It's so bum and I'm like, this doesn't even, it's not doing what it's supposed to and do. And you have this really weird shape. Yeah. Yeah. It's meant to be it's it loose. looks like tight on my thigh. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, I'm that's like, these, it's not moving like sweats issue. at all. Do you reckon men's section joggers would be better for us? I think men joggers as well. You just get a smaller size. Yeah. Like everything for men, you just you get a smaller really size. You have really put me on. <laughs> I'm actually being serious. Yeah. Yeah. Even sweaters for men, like literally, well, like sweaters, I'll get it for men. Because even for women, if it's oversized, it still looks a bit like odd on the yeah, yeah. Yeah. shoulder. But if yeah. you just get a size small for men. Like, I'm not going to lie. I once bought a small H&M male blazer. And that's it. Game that's changer, still right? Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to lie. And they've got the padded Shoulders. Girl, when the blazer trend happened, I just took my brother's uh, suit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's so clever. Oh, like, my dad's that suit? padded bit. Oh, oh, so blazer. Yeah. You saw my uncle's blazer. Literally, and it works. Yeah. It looks yeah. good. Like, yeah, like, like, you can get away with it. No one will ever know. The only annoying thing is, obviously, the sleeves are really long, but that's kind of like a flex. It's still in, yeah. yeah. Like, like that's literally the style. Like that. Yeah, yeah, me too. Because recently, more than ever, I've started to elevate my friendship circle i have very few friends and mainly two i keep in contact with my sister-in-law as well as my best friend of nearly 10 years an online friend 
And a few weeks ago, I was, as much as I hate to say it, depressed with the fact how my social life is non-existent. All my friends are overseas, online. And while my older sister said that we are sisters and we're friends, it's not really the same. Mm. I remember a time when a potential I was talking to had spoken highly of his friends and trips that they'd go on. And I remember sitting there thinking how I wish I had such a circle in my life too. It gets really lonely these days where no one's online like today. Um, there are either, either there aren't sisters at my local masjid that are basically my age, or they're not practicing Muslim as I engaging in halal dating, talking to the opposite sex, pretty much deal breaker stuff for me in regards to friendships. So for sisters or even brothers that are experiencing something similar, how do you cope with loneliness? Oh my God, this is so relatable. <laughs> <laughs> this is so relatable i felt really lonely in high school i feel like i was i was that person that used to like be friends with everyone i never had like deep rooted friendships like had like like this is your bestie yeah. i only got that i would say after i finished high school and like i went to college and that's when i like right. gained those friends um so yeah i, I do i kind of agree with it a little bit it's it hard. is hard it i is think hard. <clears throat> i definitely have dealt with that like as soon as i moved here it took time to adjust and i went through like extreme loneliness the first mm. year because i didn't know anyone and then also like when you're in your late 20s it's so much harder to make friends because people already have like their groups yeah 100%. girl so I'm like <laughs> meshing into a group they're like who are you like who are you who are you, who are you? Literally. Literally. Shower experiences. you know what i mean and then also like restarting your like your life like you don't know who to trust yeah. or like who to open mm -hmm. up to it's, it's harder like when it's harder older. when you're it's older so much harder when it's you're so older. much harder and i think that like there is an epidemic of loneliness now because like we're so some of us are chronically online yeah and like rely on online relationships but then outside of that there's no one that we talk to or are friends with yeah some people so, they like, just don't know how to or don't know how to so yeah i i definitely relate to that yeah. oh my god i didn't even Sorry. think of it like that i feel like i'm not i feel like i'm not gonna lie alhamdulillah i feel blessed now yeah that i've got a core group of friends that even though now that they've kind of like most of them have like moved away and they've gone abroad and everyone's kind of living their own lives right. but like you're right you know it is kind of online because you're like on whatsapp groups yeah. and like mm. instagram groups and tiktok groups yeah. but like occasionally we see each other like nowadays in there's like five of us left including colton and yeah. like what we do like every friday we'll try and like plan an activity to but that's together. if we but manage that's if yeah. it works out mm. and life allows so the rest us of the week we're just lonely and it's like my friends and my work colleagues which is sad yeah <laughs> well, like you just facetime so time. people yeah, yeah facetime as well it's another like one group facetime really takes the loneliness away sometimes yeah. and it's sad that is, that is the only interaction you have especially if you're like working yeah a full-time job and like you have a family or like yeah. it's just crazy you i think do you know what it is time. i think group group facetime is a great buffer like it's nice yeah. that we have the option to do that but it's so much nicer when we're, we all manage to meet up and see each other. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because it's just like... You're so much happier. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's just a palate cleanser. Yeah. Like you genuinely feel much more happier Yeah. when you see people that like you relate to. Yeah. So like she's basically said, I feel lonely. How can I combat this? Like I would say... Do you know what it is? We, the, this, she's mentioned like specific things. Like there aren't any sisters at the local masjid that are around her age or they're not practicing Muslimers, um, i.e. they engage in halal dating, <laughs> talking to the opposite sex, pretty much deal breaker stuff. She needs to get the right I, I was halal gonna, haram ratio. Yeah. Yeah. I was about to say, like sometimes <laughs> like you're, like if you're so strict on like yeah, finding certain types of friends, you're literally gonna be isolated yeah. forever. It's exactly the same as what you were saying earlier about it's having like high expectations. expectations yeah. yeah, like I think sometimes when you're like, oh, all my friends have to be like super halal. Yeah. First of all, that's not fair because we're humans. Yeah. We're meant to sin, like we're not, it's in our fitra like we're not meant to be perfect so we're i think when infallible. you exactly so you might actually be like literally blocking your blessings from meeting someone who could actually like but be you can such an incredible person life. or change your life and it, you might be the reason why they change and yeah, not like exactly. do that sin anymore or exactly. whatever exactly like you don't know like you, you might know, guide them yeah I, I really don't believe in this whole thing of like having to find people who are exactly are like you or practicing or i think everyone should be but yeah, i mean i get it she wants that she wants the medium of halal to haram ratio yeah. i get it but it's like you're not gonna find everyone no like yeah you have to be open to finding good people yeah Just there's good loads people. of good people out there there's loads of good sisters out there yeah but it is hard and i think that right now like every like when i said chronically online like what you see online is what people believe is like reality yeah, yeah. even if you know it's not real in mm. your mind you're like this is real life 
like so like social media social well. media exactly yeah. so like you see on tiktok like people going out and like hanging out or like people on their stories like with their friends and you're like I don't have friends like what mm. but the same people that are going out are dealing with what you're dealing with but yeah. it's just in a, a different way it's a facade it's like you know yeah. they, they might not even be close to these people but yeah. are just posting and like yeah. well they, that's probably the first time they saw them in a month <laughs> you know what i mean exactly like we don't know the stories behind it yeah. but unfortunately mm. it is a very common thing it's romanticizing literally romanticizing people yeah but and i think what, loneliness is not, not a bad thing yeah it's not and if you find like you find things to do i've discovered more of myself you, yeah you'll find like, your, your yeah. Find yourself. Yeah. do you know what i mean and also i feel like when i was a teenager and like in my early 20s i really relied on like going out a lot and yeah. like going out with friends and like i needed people to like keep me company same. to make me happy mm. yeah same um and it wasn't until i got married and i had children and i was forced to be lonely mm. yeah I'm judging you girls yeah, yeah, yeah. i was like he, they had a different lifestyle to me compared to what i was living in that in that period of time so like i had a baby it was very hard for me to go out at that point when you've got a newborn yeah so that kind of like forced me to rediscover things that i liked about myself exactly. or like just chilling and watching tv or like going for a nice walk or just doing my own thing like now I do every time I go out I'm always like tell me I'm just having my me time and it's like that's where it came from just like yeah. rediscovering myself so yeah. you're right um yeah. you don't always have to be yeah like around people but yeah. I get it yeah I mean I think there's like they've got to find a good balance between being chronically lonely r rediscovering yourself and also actively trying to make Friends. friends like connections. you've got to go out there yeah yeah it doesn't necessarily you don't have to have the intention of making a friend it could just be an acquaintance a connection right you could just go to your local coffee shop one day on your own and decide Literally. i'm gonna speak to yeah. someone today by yeah. force or by force. well like go yeah. to events go to fun events yeah. where yeah. people are gonna be around yeah but you just have to step out of your comfort zone literally right. and be open to meeting new people yeah i feel like if you restrict yourself from it it's kind of like you're, you're literally blocking your blessings exactly like yeah. i used to have that mentality of like oh uh, if i don't know so. them like what am i gonna say what am i gonna say yeah. what am i but then so after I, literally i broke that barrier and now i'm literally like meeting people who follow me and like yeah. going out for coffees and like oh, you're so little. creating you, friends like you get you get to a thing where basically like in the beginning it's always tough because it's like you're not you've never done this before it's out of your comfort zone but then the more you start speaking to people that you've never spoken to before the easier it gets yeah right? literally i've gone on so many first dates with women here yeah like since being here <laughs> <laughs> I love that piano. I, know, I <laughs> saw that you met Nadira. Yeah, oh, like, I Nadira, yeah. <laughs> like I'm just very much like in the beginning when I first moved, I was obviously very used to like my own like I have my solid like core friends. Yeah. So like me leaving them and being here was like hard. Sure. I was like, oh my god, like I can't just pick up the phone and be like, hey, like let's go out, like yeah. you yeah, know. So that recreate. was like. Uh, yeah huge adjustment and then like seeing my husband go out with like his core group of friends i'm like <sighs> triggered like i'm so triggered <laughs> i was like can i go <laughs> can i just sit there and watch you guys you know what i mean <laughs> <I'm off>. literally <laughs> but um alhamdulillah like when i moved and people found out i was like i moved to the uk so many girls like yeah. reached out and were like would love in the beginning i was kind of like okay uh, <laughs> i mean i'm, <laughs> I, I I'm, I'm shy, shy. <laughs> Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I would be too. Literally. I would be too. But now, alhamdulillah, like, I think that I've, like, gone past that. And, like, yeah. I'll go on these first dates. And sometimes, like, after I hang out <laughs> with one person, I'm like, okay, I'm never going to see this person again. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, like, like we have nothing in common. Yeah. But you're cool, but we have nothing in common. Yeah. And then I'll meet someone else, and I'm like, oh, my God, we, like, have so we much click. in common. And then yeah, it just, like, leads and to, it like, just goes from yeah. yeah. It's like you've got self-awareness. You know who you like, who you're not going to really hang out with again. Yeah. It's normal. But that self-awareness comes from exploring exploring and yeah. like the loneliness because when i was like in my stage of like loneliness which i'm kind of like still in in and out of yeah i learned so much about myself and like my personality what i like what i don't like yeah and so like when i met these people i was like okay like we align here yeah. so i feel like so this will work. like this will work well oh. but alhamdulillah like i think you just have to like honestly yeah. step out of your comfort zone and just Gosh, be okay with being social uncomfortable social anxiety it's, yeah. it's annoying, but you got to do you it. You got to break but it. But it's mostly in your brain. It's in your head, yeah. It's you. Yeah. Like, how many times have me and Kelton gone to events and we're like, the first few times we went, we're like, oh my God, we're just going to stand in the corner and just talk to ourselves. Yeah. Like, and then we're like, no, we can't do that. That's so weird. So we're like, we have to force ourselves to go and speak to people. And we were dying inside. Yeah, dying. But we did it. And we had the best time. The best yeah. time. And we met so many people. Like, it was so lit. Is yeah. that me? Yeah, but also you have another thing that I realize, especially about myself, is I always have like 
peaks and troughs of like when I'm feeling confident. Yeah. 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 Like sometimes I'm feeling so confident. I'm like, Before yes, my period. Yeah. Anyone here. Definitely. And then other times I'm just like, Damn, what's I'm PMSing. Like yeah. fumbling, I yeah. can't even speak, yeah. I'm yeah. sweating. Literally, yeah, yeah. literally. If I'm PMSing, just no <laughs> conversation ain't working. My words don't even come out right, so. Yeah, I don't know, it's weird. Like yeah. sometimes I feel like I'm on top of the world and sometimes yeah. I'm just like. I'm a, telling you, it's shell. all linked to your menstrual cycle, guys. Do you I've think? been reading this. Does like it? when, just before your period starts, you are like on top of the world, your skin is nice. It's like your body is selling you to the world, saying <laughs> procreate me, which means I'm gonna make you more pretty, <laughs> more confident, you get more sleep. Yeah. Scientific. Damn. I've seen actually pictures, I don't know if you saw, yeah. where like yeah. the, the face, her face is like skinnier. Yeah. When she's like, and like your face transforms. Yeah. Like her face was completely different Wild. from the beginning of her cycle to the end of her cycle. Do you think that's got something to do with how sometimes like when you do your makeup, you're like, wow, I look great. And some days sometimes you look yeah. snatched, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, sometimes you're like, wow. And, and then, then some days your like, skin is just like, yeah. you've got and you're like, and you're the exact up. same <laughs> <laughs> happened. Why is it Like you're trying to contour, but there's no contouring happening. Yeah, you did the exact same stuff. It's like my face coming out. For me, it's like the spots on my forehead, they've been true. Yeah, and I'm like, same, same. Down. Yeah, like, why is my, my jaw was snatched last week when like, I did the I same look? Literally. I had no texture. Where is the texture coming from? Literally. Right? Isn't that mad? That's crazy. It's a woman's body I as know. well. <laughs> I know. But you know what it is? Just to come back to loneliness, I genuinely feel like, especially now, like, I remember I was talking to my mum about this, and she was like to me, how back in the day in Somalia, like, hammered. Um, before it became religious, like they used to have so many events for like young people. Yeah. They used to go out, go watch theaters, art shows. Like they used to have so much on. Yeah. And I just feel like we don't have that. Yeah. yeah. Like especially for Muslim women, like yeah. we don't have those experiences. And I feel like. And if they if they do if they are happening, I also feel like they're not. Like accessible. You don't really hear, yeah, I don't yeah. hear about them that often. Or like, or like you'll hear about it when it ends. It. Yeah. yeah. Or like you'll see it on certain TikTok. groups will know. Yeah. yeah so that's like actually so true i think that's why when there are like for example tds is a perfect example yeah. when they have events like the show out is amazing yeah because we don't have thingy. yeah exactly like anyone can come yeah anyone can come but also there's not a lot of those events like where do you get loads unless people are doing live shows yeah that's um, actually so true and in this in this environment like let's say tds like there's not a lot of Muslim women doing this, yeah. Yeah. or like hosting events that isn't music related, right. but just like people connecting yeah. and like having a good time, and like you get to go to an art show or poetry or just like or just have like fun or like sip and paint, yeah. you know? Yeah. No, yeah, like yeah, some type of like networking. Yeah, yeah. it's not always. So yeah, I just feel like that's something a lot of our cultures are missing. Yeah. So you never know. We need. We definitely need to organize more more of those. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Wouldn't it be fun? I, would I think it would fun. be I, on a on my Instagram's broadcast channel. It's so cute because there's like a bunch of people on there. If you're watching this, then you guys know. Hey it's girl. so cute. But um, on there, we were just like for Ramadan. I'm like, we should do like a sip and paint where I can actually meet you guys. Well, oh, you should, yeah. and you can teach us how to do yeah. this. Yeah. So I was that like, would be so good. Yeah. So I was like, fun. either that or a book club for Ramadan, and yes. they all voted for, majority voted book club. So I was like, okay, we'll oh, do book they? club. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what happened to the art? I like, what are you saying? But I was like, I think you guys want to read. <laughs> but I was like, okay, because I, I used to have a bookstagram page as well and like recommend oh. books and stuff. So I was like, maybe they just, I don't know. Anyways, we're if do we that. can read, I, I'm down for both. I'm coming to both, but I really want to do the painting because I feel yeah, like I want to do the supper. Everyone paint. has an artistic side. Yeah. And I, get my yeah. I feel like I, I'd need your help. <laughs> I, I just hold my so hand <laughs> while I stroke the canvas <laughs> with the brush. I feel like that would be so fun. That would be so good, and yeah. also. A book, uh, you know who does a book really good book club? Amalia does a good book yes, club. Yes, yeah. I've heard of them. I would love to go to. Yeah, I would everything to go good to. is always in East London. Yes, that's another <laughs> and issue. And I just can't I'm travel having. that far. Isn't that far for you guys? I just can't. You don't understand. Girl, I literally came from Birmingham. Do you see me complaining? I know. I just. <laughs> Honestly, I don't she know. She shut us up. I oh, know. <laughs> like, Gosh. people from London kill me. Like, you guys complain about going no, from West to no, East? No, to be fair, no, to no. be fair to us, we discovered the Elizabeth line recently. Yeah, yeah, we did, we did, we did. And it took us 20 Is minutes. Is it that far? 20 minutes yeah, to get to East London. Minutes. But okay. can I say something, Kat? Traffic, 5.30 to 7 o'clock, going to East London is like going to Birmingham. No, but that's if you go no by a car. If you buy a car, it's okay, like going to Birmingham. Okay. It's like two hours. It's just so take long. the train, girl. Why are you? 
Why are Girl, you killing yourself? we've recently <laughs> discovered it. So a certain <laughs> tube line. But also, do you know what it is? It's just really cold at the moment. And I always find there's loads it's of my things anemia. happening yeah. around this time of year. It's my anemia. It's my anemia. You know what, though? Once you start driving, like, you cannot go back. Exactly. No. Like, when I started driving, I did not touch, like, our, t- like, our tube line in Toronto yeah. for years. Like, oh, my God. When I stepped into it the first time, I was shaking it a little bit. I was like, what's going on? Girls like, this summer in. when I went, I was It's like, yeah. once you drive, you can't go back. You and also, once back. you've driven before, you are going to rely on your friends to drive Yeah. You. Uh, mm, 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 I cannot. That's you. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> take the Elizabeth laugh. I'm joking. I don't actually mind taking the Elizabeth laugh. But yeah, um, that's a really good book club. But you know what I want? Recently, I was into really, um, I was into like loads of romantic books. But now I want to discover Muslim, like yeah. halal romantic books. Mm. Because why not? We're trying to halalify the podcast. We are, we are, we are. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, can you check out Hannah's art, please? It's amazing. Thank you. Well, I literally was talking about... Um, my hijab journey and how like I'm trying to <gasps> cover my edges. Okay, I know they're not like that covered right now, but I'm trying to get you're there. Getting that, you're yeah. getting that. So I was talking to um, one of my friends about like how hijab looks so different for everyone and everyone's like on like a different, different trajectories yeah. of hijab. But I feel like the older you get, the more you start to solidify like your understanding of hijab yeah. and like what it means to you. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I'm kind of at that stage and it's so nice. Like yeah. now I want to like wear under caps. Now I like want to discover. So anyways, I'm at that stage of my life right now, which is like really nice. Yeah. I'm still not hundred percent there. Can I just say though, like I only recently discovered under caps before I found them very like annoying, annoying, very hard to manage. I still find them I annoying. would lose yeah. the yeah. colors that I needed yeah. for the hijabs that I needed. At times, like recently, when I started wearing under caps again, because I felt like it really maintained the bush, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But it's like, how am I wearing a black hijab and my under cap is pink? Yeah, like, you can't I'm do just that. Like, <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> like, you can't come out with that. But there's, you know what I just know? There's certain hijabis that it just looks so sleek. Amazing. Amazing. Like when they wear undercaps, I'm like, how do you make it look like that? Because when I do it, it looks like, you know, the hijabs we wore when we were like five? Yeah. Yeah. Like the one piece that looks like the two yeah, piece? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it looks That's like on like me. That's like me when I wear a jersey like this. Dri- my face girl don't get me started on jersey I literally made an oh, Instagram post about this I'm like guys jersey. I look jersey like an like egg, egg. Like egg. Well, yeah I'm like, I'm like I literally me. look like an you egg you a nice slim I face love, do you know what it is with jerseys though it's the way you wear you have to wear them quite relaxed loose. and loose yeah that's no, the thing I you, like to go like that's, this that's the thing that's my problem but with chiffon I used to be a chiffon girl with I'm a chiffon, chiffon girl does this to you. yeah, yeah. So if you like tuck it in, oh, is that your mark? Because it's quite like a this is years of erosion on my skin. Oh my god, do I have that? (laughs) No, No. I'm using salicylic acid. You know how she like chucks it on? No, but I had like a really tight hijab. You did it tight, yeah. And then I used to just tuck it in. So this is like from 17 to like 29. Oh my god! I got this. This is why I stopped being a chiffon girl. Yeah. Someone commented on my thing and said like I only wear chiffon and I wear it so tight that it chokes me. And I commented and I'm like, girl, that's not. I'm like, why, like, why are you talking about? Like, I'm, like, why are you killing yourself? With your I just, started getting the mark me. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get the mark? I started getting it. That's why I stopped. I genuinely, to you guys, I genuinely thought I had cancer. <laughs> Allah, <laughs> Allah, 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 Allah. Allah. Well, why me. did you make it that tight though? I don't know. It was just <laughs> routine, guys. It wasn't even that tight. Well, look, it's like you know when you scrape it yeah, in yeah, yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. tuck it in. The tuck created this dark Pigmentation. Mark. So I thought, what is going on? Oh, like, because you're constantly like yeah. pushing on the skin. And, and it's and rough. I was like, it's yeah. rough and, and it's like very hard. And I was like, guys, I think I've got skin cancer. Like, what <laughs> is this? I just looked at my skin one day and it's dark. But the day you discovered that it was the hijab that was doing that to one you, day. best believe. I was I like, no it was more. like a light bulb. I was like, dick. <gasps> But like, do you know, know who really, do you know who wears chiffon hijabs really well? That mm. I literally sat down and watched the TikTok tutorial. Who? Yasmin. Yasmin. <laughs> yeah, but shall I tell you Yasmin? Yasmin. Which Yasmin? You know, okay, okay Yasmin. Yasmin. Oh yes. But yes. you know, okay Yasmin's oh, trick. Mashallah. Is that the, the cap and the hijab match. Are match. No, they match, but oh, they're stuck the hijab together. Tape. The hijab tape, right? Or is it? No, it's the hijab tape. But she also, I think there's this other girl who's a hijabi who owns a brand. That the cap oh, and the chiffon about. hijab. Oh, so it's not two. It's, like it's, one piece. it's a one piece together, <gasps> but it looks match. like a two piece. This whole time. Universal. But wait, there's another thing that Yasmin Masha does. Allah. What does Yasmin do? You, so Yasmin, so you know how a chiffon is a very annoying yeah. like, um, material to play around with because it moves a lot. 
So what she does is she safety pins it to her shoulder so Smooth. it doesn't that move around. That beautiful drape. Her hijabs mm. always look it's ten times. Intentional. Masha Allah. And I said, I'm going to do this one day. But I, I need to know what she does under her hijab. Like, is it like slick down like her hair? Like, I need to know what people are doing with their hair. Yeah. Yeah. No, because honestly. Because sometimes when you have the bump or like if it's too puffy here, it just looks funny. So I'm yeah. like, what are y'all doing underneath? Like, it must be a slick pony. Has to be a slick, right? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I don't slick though. And it looks I fine. need to do something though that's less abrasive for my hair because this, that slick down is causing that receding hair. <laughs> And then I, I remember like, I was I asking get... Aisha, Aisha Armada, I was asking her about satin bonnets. You know, the one with mm. the undercaps with the satin lines. And she said that she prefers the other one over the satin ones. But in my head, the other one? Like, like the, the non satin? Oh, okay. Yeah, the regular. Right. Is it cotton? I think it's cotton, yeah. Yeah, the right. regular cotton one. She said she prefers that. But then I was like, so what am I supposed to do? Because I'm really worried about. Oh, you can wear a do rag. Sometimes I'll wear a do rag under my hijab. Yeah. And then maybe put the. Or is that, I guess, redundant? It's kind of like doing this. I just want something that, like, protects, like, my edges. My edges, yeah. Uh, My edges, girl. Mm. You know what I do sometimes? I'm actually really lazy, but this has worked for me. So, like, um, my bonnet, I'll bring it up here, and then I'll let my edges come out like that at night time. And then the oh, bonnet, yeah. I'll just tie it at the back with a little hair band and it yeah. stays the whole night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, let my, I let them breathe as well. Yeah. But you guys have like small foreheads. I can't have I do not have, girl. I don't know how to wear it. No, I know. Trust me. I can't, I can't do none of this like <laughs> cute baby hair styles. I can't do that. And I was like, no, I'm repping the <laughs> East African <laughs> forehead. <laughs> I, listen, I no, can't catch this people. I let it all out so they know, right? Because this is me. The day I take off my hijab, there's no shock, you know? Like what happened? No, 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 no. Everything's you know. out. You know, you know where it starts. You this know is where it me. This is my true form. And guys. Then I just came out, and my was just like, "Cotton, yours is not bad." I'll no, tell you what, Cotton's Cotton's forehead. Don't describe my forehead. It's you know very what? Every person's out forehead. Is everyone, big. every East African person thinks their forehead's big because it's a relative thing. Yeah, yeah. I think it right. suits your face though. Did you see that girl on TikTok? I was dying where she was talking about her hairline. We see the Somali girl. She's so funny. No, She's like, see. guys, my hairline is literally doing a pilgrimage right now I'm like <laughs> i don't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> she's like i need help help me <laughs> i'm she's not gonna lie though why are you down for this long i don't no, I know. I know my edges are mad oh, yeah, See, i've crazy. noticed loads of flyaways at the front that isn't even the baby hairs it's my actual like hair. why am i suffering i don't even in? have my hair out like i think it's, it's so time deep. to like hop on minoxidil i've been hearing about minoxidil and really? i think it's like really? no i'm scared yeah. of that because i heard that once you start you start, taking you it stop. you don't you can't stop yeah. why not one know, of my friends addictive. is using it and mashallah what the hair is the, hairs. the baby hairs are baby hairs no. yeah like it's insane like so much hair grew wow. and then she like recommended it to me she was like but like you can't stop using it and i was like so what do i do I like, if, I pregnant, if i get pregnant or if i get pregnant then what you're pissed no but after you get pregnant after you have your baby Wait, you've can got you this three month period where your hair just looks amazing but can you take it but doesn't it fall like out guys i'm scared through. i hear so many things you know the girl with the list that's me yeah <laughs> Wait, but can you take monoxidil like, whilst pregnant? No. I don't think so. I researched. Yeah. I researched. I'm like, you just in case. Like, yeah, you no. might as well start using that after you give birth. That's after what yeah. I was, yeah. I was thinking later. After you stop breastfeeding. Or I don't know, girl. I might go to Turkey. I'm mm. seeing. Hey. If, if the men are going, why are we yeah. not going? That's, <laughs> Wait, that's my just question. A, just a little bit, though. Just a little, little bit. bit. the front. I was talking to my husband about it because when I went to Turkey, on the plane back, you always see people coming back from like yeah, getting yeah. their hair. The and you just see the dots. So I'm like, guys, I'm like, why do they not wear hats or like... I think they have to. I think they're, they're not allowed to. Yeah. So, so I'm like, do. what do we do? <laughs> so you, have to what? Have, you have to do this. <laughs> Just have a hijab. <laughs> you have to have it hovering. You have oh to hold God. your hijab literally, the whole flight. Literally, I'm like, so what do we do? And he's like, why are you asking me all these questions? I'm like, I'm just asking, you know, just no, no. in case. You know what my issue with Turkey is, guys? That if I get that done, I'm like, I need to get the next thing. Like, yeah. I need to get the I'm next thing. I would yeah. get carried away. I'm like lipo, nose, everything. I feel, yeah. I feel like I come back a whole day. Listen, literally. but you know, they always say you're not ugly. You just don't have money. Yeah. Like, I'm like, so I true. say that all the time though. Like, it's if I had money. Kardashian money, do you think mm, <laughs> that's literally what it is? You like, just, who is Beyonce to me? Like, right. I'll be honest, <laughs> I would be like, <laughs> like when we see what they look like before, I'm like, oh, okay, it's money. Yeah, I could right, do it. It's definitely it's money. money. It is though. Like literally. the facials, the fillers. Not that I would get it, but yeah, just their facials alone is like, nah. insane. It's amazing. They just damn. But yeah, must be nice. 
I'm thinking about my turkey. I'm thinking about my turkey. Oh, right. I've been thinking about you turkey. Guys are putting ideas in my head now. I need to. No, but honestly, guys, like when you love have yourself, kids, yeah, love yourself, love like. yourself. Because no, I just before we start with the self love. No, we because just one of my friends messaged the group chat the other day. She said one of her friends started an esthetician um, clinic and she's looking for models. And That's I was so like, shall I say sign me up? <laughs> I don't mind getting injections in my lips. Oh, girl, God. the stuff that people are doing though. <laughs> it's so subtle, but it's so beautiful. So, like like good. getting your jaw. It looks I'm good. Getting people getting their jaw. I said, so I could get the fat removed. Literally. The the There's like non-surgical things Insane. you could do to your face to just make it look Snatched. like. Snatched. But now, girls, like, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself. No, love yourself, yeah, guys. This is not as promoting. After you have two kids, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you're thinking about anything right now. <laughs> Anything that's halal, I'll do it <laughs> at this point because those little gremlins, <laughs> they suck the life out of you, literally, and I'm not even joking. So, oh. I'm just gonna end it there. I don't wanna ruin it for anyone. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. Anyway, guys, that is the end of our episode. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on the YouTube download the episode on the Spotify and Apple podcast. Don't forget to leave a review, five stars and a little Make comment. sure you drop, drop the little yeah, five stars. Get, five stars the, only. Five stars <laughs> only. <laughs> four? What's four? Like, only what five. Is this? Like, ew, we don't want it. <laughs> and make sure you follow our lovely girl, Hanan. Yeah. Hanan's Corner. Hanan's Corner. And interact with that content. I, I think I everyone it. already does, to be I fair. I think they already do, but yeah. whoever isn't, they better get to know. <laughs> We'll be leaving Hanan's uh, social media details in Aww. the description. Wow. And thank you for having me. Aww. This was so we fun. We hope you had fun. I had so much fun. Oh, Hanan, honestly, we really enjoyed this. This uh, is a very funny episode. Oh, well, that was so fun. It's fun. When we go to Birmingham next, Hanan. Girl, I'll kidding. be right there. Listen, I'm not I don't kidding. know if you guys will ever come, though, because I feel people from London say that, and then they just come like once <laughs> every true, like, three it's years. It's true. It's true. <laughs> you know, I'm not even going to lie to you, Hanan, but if, for However, whatever if reason, you do, if I not. end up in Birmingham one day, <laughs> we I might even miss you. <laughs> we might even move there. The way London house prices are looking. Everyone's coming to Birmingham, guys. You get I'm space. Just, mm, oh my God, and a garden. If I get a three bedroom house, that's, you know, under 400K. Listen, girl, 300 even. Ooh. In a nice area. Ooh. No, you lot are living life or lahe. Like, Sell it to you. <laughs> guys, a two bedroom house in London is like 700, 800K. It's that bleeding you dry. That's wild. It's I was looking much. at like, like the Sloan area. I don't know if you guys Sloan know, like Square. Central, like Sloan Square. Yeah. Girl. What you doing? No, I would, no, oh, girl, no, no, no. Oh, no, guys, girl. I can't afford it. I can't afford girl, it. I'm thinking that art. No, no, no. Do we need to tell Lana to draw? No, no, no. <laughs> so I have this thing. The <laughs> no, it's not that. I have this thing where, like, I like to look at real estate and just imagine. You know oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, manifesting. Manifesting, exactly. Yeah, so I'll go on, like, Sloan Square, Knightsbridge. I'm just curious, as someone who came from Toronto, to see the real estate, like, here is insane. Do you so reckon the prices are quite similar? No, girl. You guys are in, like, Wild. We're in hell. Like this is not normal. This is hell. Like it's ours is not is bad, but not as bad this as. This is why everyone. It's just sad. I remember people used to complain about the Toronto house prices, but I used to think like, oh damn, like London probably isn't that bad. Toronto no, house prices are bad if you're from Toronto. Yeah. Because uh, it's comparing to like what it used to be, right? But can yeah. I just say diaspora in America and Canada? are doing a thousand percent better than oh, the yeah. diaspora in Europe, Girl, especially we know. London. So. Girl, we know. <laughs> Girl, we know. <laughs> but it's true. Like, but you know so what it sad. is? Is the pay. Yeah. When I found out how, how much occupational therapists it's get like paid here, I packed my bags. I said, there's no, no way. way. Yeah, I It's know. insane. Like, the starting rate in Canada is like, what, like 80, 90, six your, figures. But if it's that high, does that mean your life, like just general buying stuff is quite high? So like, um, like grocery shopping. Yeah, grocery shopping bills. there is expensive. Here okay. it's cheap. And also, is your healthcare system free? Or private? Mm -hmm. No, it's free. Like you guys. Uh, no, uh, but we're being robbed. <laughs> Anna, we're being robbed here. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's free. Girl, when I found out how much nurses get paid here. It's mad. Band five Do you know how much they get paid 20, in Canada? 21K. That's wild to me. Starting. That's no, wild that's to me. That's insane. Why do, you, why do people never do these comparisons? It's wild. No, like in my be salary job that I have, they should be protesting. Right? It's they have, but they isn't, give it, them isn't that why there's not many nurses? Like they all yeah, just dipped they all and went to like they Dubai. All leave. Like, like as someone in my position in America gets 150k. That's isn't that crazy. mad? That's correct. In mental health. I don't know what you're doing in this country, though. Girl, I, just, I can't raise sons in America. I've said this. Before. What about Dubai? 
Dubai, um, after you build your experience, you'd be good in Dubai. But like, if you people. go to like Doha and Dubai, they want you to have a master's, and I'm and nobody really my age. Yeah, they do. So What's your program? Like in mental health. So I do okay, mental health okay. nursing, but I do mental okay. health management. But isn't it like masters or experience? No. So oh. in Doha and Dubai now, they want you to have a masters. Oh. Otherwise, you won't elevate to like a higher, more direct or senior level. Get your masters, girl. Mm, girl I'm not trying to. <laughs> Like for you, if you guys want to do it back home, like I think you should get your master's. That's what I know. Yeah. Um, like going to America is a lot easier with experience, yeah. and like they don't expect, or like Canada or like Australia. Like Girl, America, do you guys look like at America. Texas? Like, do you guys ever get the real estate from Texas on your for you page? Girl, I do, and it's, and so it's like I know. It's so sad Insane. the way we live. They have mansions. I know, on. I know. They've got basements. And it's so cheap. Like they've got backyards, front yards. Insane. It's just sad. Can I just say? detached homes? It's insane. I feel like, and also the Muslim community in Houston, I think it is Houston or Dallas, wherever Amr Suleiman is, is yeah, like yeah. really nice apparently. Like the mosques wow. are incredible. Like the Muslim, like everyone is flocked that, there. Is that where we're going? When I think we need to. Is that, <laughs> that where we're migrating next? But you know what? I, just, <laughs> I would only do this if loads of people were doing it. Yeah, I need a community. I need a, community. I need a village to help me raise my kids. I need some London yeah. yeah. I need some Brummy gals there. You need mm. to convince, just convince your friends. Mm. I, my thing is, why do we like, I why are we suffering? Like, Wallah is so That's crazy. what it is. It's like, like me, I'm, Coming as a Canadian, it's a little bit different. Like I can see the differences, like clearly. This is why we're suffering. What I just said is why we're suffering. But because like everyone's just waiting for one person to yeah, do yeah. it. I think that's what we always is. say in our friendship group. We want a gated community. <laughs> <laughs> this is not where, happening. Where we all help each other. But we all help each other to raise the kids. Like if we can buy one piece of land somewhere, yeah. and we'd all just have a house somewhere. You know, like, everyone says every group of friends says this <laughs> we, though. Because our friends want to raise our kids in a communion. Uh, like that's, I think it's, it's possible, dream. but London is just it gets worse. Girl, it's, it's hell. Anyway, yeah. guys. Thank <laughs> Listen to the rest of that. Um, inshallah, we love you guys so much. Thank you so much for supporting us. Bye. And bye. bye.